So in this specific lecture, let's go ahead and learn how to capture data from form inputs. So until now, we have learned how to create elements and render them on the output screen. But whenever you're building real life websites, what you need to do is that you need to accept some information from the end user. And in order to accept that information, you obviously need something like an HTML form. Now in regular HTML, you could simply go ahead and create the form elements and those form elements like the input field, the buttons, the radio buttons and the checkboxes are responsible to handle the input and update the values. But in React, the form elements and their inputs are actually controlled by React itself. So this might sound a little bit tricky unless and until we watch it in action. So let's go ahead and let's try to create a form in React and let's see how that works. So first of all, what I would do is that I would go ahead and create a form component in React. So simply go to the components, create a new file and name it as form.js. And as usual with any React component, uh, let's say this is going to be a class based component. So I would say class form extends component and then I'll make this thing render return and in here I'll simply have a div which would say something like form and then I would export this particular form so export default form so once we have exported that let's make use of that form in the app.js file so I would go inside the app.js and over here let's import the form so import form from components forward slash form. And over here now, instead of this products, I would simply render the form. So if I go back here, hit refresh, it says component is not defined. That's because we also need to import component from React, which is this line. So I'll copy this, go inside the form and simply import component from React. So if we fix that, as you can see, we have this particular form displayed up over here. Now let's create an actual form in there. And in order to create an actual form, I have to go back here inside this div and let's actually enclose this return inside the parentheses so that we don't have any error. And now right up over here, let's create a simple HTML form as we would create in a regular HTML page. So I would say form here. And let's add an input field. So I would say input, let's say the type of this thing is going to be text. And now here I will set the value of this thing to let's say first name. So let's say this input field's job is to go ahead and accept the first name from the user. So if I do that and if I go back here, if I hit refresh, so if I try to edit this value, as you can see, the value does not change. And we also get a warning here, which says you provided a value props to the form field without an on change handler. This will render a read only field. If the field should be mutable, use default value. Otherwise set either on change or read only. So technically what happens is that whenever you create this type of form in HTML, it would be all fine and good. You would be able to go ahead and edit this value. But in case of react, Whenever we are providing this value, this value actually is a prop which gets passed to this component. And in React, we cannot directly go ahead and alter the value of this particular prop here. Instead, in order to change the value of this input field, we have to use a method which is called as an onChanged method. So that means now, in order to get rid of this warning and in order to actually alter or change the content of this, we now need to make use of the onChange handler. So we need to add this onChange handler to this input field. So let's try doing that. So for now, I'll say onChange equals. And for now, let's keep this thing as empty. And once this thing is kept empty, if I go ahead, hit refresh, again, it will give us an error because the on change is empty. And this on change now needs a particular method to execute. So that means now we need to pass in a function or a method to this on change so that the change could be handled. So let's pass in a method. Now, as this is a class based component, we need to pass in a method here. So we have not created any method as of now, but let's say we want to pass in the method as handle change. Now, as this is a method from this same class form, 
I have to say this dot handle change. And now we actually have to create that specific method up over here inside this class. So let's learn how to create them. So I would say handle change here, which is going to be a method and I'll make use of arrow functions here to create the method. And whenever you create this specific method, what happens is that as this on change is an event handler, whenever you're calling on change over here like that, the event itself gets passed to it. And that event is accessible up over here. So I would say event up over here. Now, once we have this particular event here, what we could do is that we could access that event up over here. And this particular event is going to have the value or contain the value for this input field, which is right now first name. Now, what we are going to do is that in this handle change event, we are going to try to change the value of this specific first name. So let's learn how exactly to do that. But even before that, uh, let's try to log the value of the event which we have. So if I say console.log, and if I try to log the value of event, let's see what do we get. So if I just hit refresh, and if I just try to edit the value, I'm going to get this particular synthetic base event here. So as you can see, this has a bunch of information. And in this particular information object, we also have a value called as target. And that target has the value for input. So as you can see, we have this input here. And if we keep on scrolling down here, it has a bunch of attributes in there. So out of these attributes, we actually want the value attribute. So now let's try to log event dot target dot value and see what do we get here. So if I go ahead, hit refresh, and if I try to edit this, as you can see, as I pressed A over here, I've gotten the value as first name A. And if I type in A again, it's going to give me the same value here. And if I type in S over here, it's going to say first names. So that means now we are actually able to access the value which is entered right up over here. So this value can be accessed by saying event.target.value. And now what we could do is that we could save that particular value inside some sort of a variable. And we all know that whenever you have to use variables in React components, we usually prefer to have a state. So let's create a state right up over here. And we all know that in order to create a state, you would need a constructor. However, that is no longer the case. Instead, what you could do is that you could directly set the value of state inside your class component without even having a constructor. So you could say state here and just create a regular object as you would create in JavaScript. So I have created the state object and let's have the value as first name or let's just say first name without the capital letters and let's keep it empty. So now what we wish to do is that in this particular handle change event, we wish to assign this event.target.value to the first name state. So in order to do that, I'll first get rid of this and I would simply say this dot set state because we want to set the state. And here I want to set the state or the state object. Therefore, I'm going to use these curly brackets. And then I would say first name as nothing but event dot target dot value. So if I do that, now what happens is that whatever value which we pass in here actually gets assigned to the first name. So now what you could do is that you could try to console log the value of first name and see what you get. So if I say console dot log, and if I want to access the first name, I need to say this dot state dot first name. So let's see what happens in that case. So if I hit refresh, you don't get any value here. And if I just uh, try to append a value, as you can see, the newly appended value appears here. However, this value still does not change no matter what I type. And that's because inside this particular input field, we have already assigned the value of first name over here. Instead, we want this particular value to be a dynamic one. And that dynamic value is going to be nothing but the value of the state which we have passed. 
So instead of having first name here, I'll get rid of this static value. And instead I would say this dot state dot first name. So let's see what happens in this case. So if I go back here, as you can see the value of this field is empty because initially when you create the state, the value of first name is set to empty. And now if I type in a letter A here, as you can see now this turned out to be an editable field. And if I type in other values like Apple, I am now able to change the value of this form field here. Now what exactly is happening here? Let's take a look. So if I type in A here, the reason why this form field is updating to A is because initially the state is empty. So the value of first name is empty. And therefore, the value of this thing is rendered to be empty. However, when I go ahead and type in the character A, this onChange method is triggered. And when this onChange method is triggered, it will go ahead and execute this method, which is handle change. Now what this handle change method does is that it first goes ahead and checks for the event and it gets all the information from event. So the event which is happening here is nothing but typing of the letter A. And now it will go ahead and try to set the stage by making use of this dot set state. And it's going to set the first name to nothing but the events target value and the events target value is nothing but A. So the first name is now set to A and therefore as the first name is set to A, what happens is that it actually re-renders this particular component and therefore we get the value A inside of here. And the reason why we don't get anything in the console as of now is because this part is rendered first and later on this is executed. So if I now type the second character here as P, in that particular case, the first character is logged in the console. So you could ignore this delaying of the console log here. That's not important as much. But the important thing which you need to remember is how this form field is getting updated and how this is only possible because of this onChange method. So remember that whenever you have to create forms in React and whenever you have to create an input field, you always need to have an onChange with that specific input right there. So the process of creating a form element is you go ahead and create an input field just like that. And whenever you create an input field, you need to create a variable to handle the input value. So then you create a variable using state just like that. So here we have created the first name variable here. And then we need to assign an on change to that particular input field. And then for the on change handler, which is handle change here, you actually need to write the code which sets the state to the new event value. So in the upcoming lecture, we will be creating one more field for our application and we are going to go through the entire process one more time. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.